On this episode of Carpe Diem, Zoom or Skin. Learn to get your glow on. The dermatologist said to wash with Cetaphil. We demystify aesthetic medicine with Dr. Stephen Peach, Ingrid Verdun, and Dr. Marin Madani. Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome. Today we discuss our aging skin. Can we reverse the hands of time? Seems aesthetic medicine has an answer to that question, but first, how does our skin actually age? If I pull Rodney forward here on the screen, he looks young and vibrant. Now let's look at a more mature picture of Rodney. Mr. Mature Rodney has some wrinkles and a little less hair. So why does this happen? When Rodney was young, in his 20s, it may take his skin two weeks to heal from some sort of damage. But Mr. Mature Rodney, well, his skin may take twice that time to heal from the same sort of trauma. This is because as we age, or as our skin ages, there is a reduction in the number and activity of stem cells in our skin. Collagen fibers, located in the dermal second deeper layer of our skin, decrease in number, and elastic fibers lose their elasticity so they don't bounce back from a stretch state to a normal state. Years of facial expression also affect skin aging, and overexposure to the sun can also accelerate skin aging, as harmful UV rays can damage the DNA in epidermal cells or the collagen fibers in the dermal skin layer, increasing wrinkles and sags in the skin. So Dr. Peach, why is it so important that we have healthy skin? Well, our skin is our first line of defense. I mean, what's the largest organ in our body? It's our skin, right? So, I mean, um, our skin is uh, intact skin and healthy skin not only makes us look good and feel good, but it's crucial uh, to, to our health because it helps protect us from pathogens. It's our first line of defense, essentially. The harmful part of the sunlight, we all enjoy being in the sun on a sunny day, bright day in summer, but the harmful part of uh, sunlight is the UV rays that are invisible. And uh, so they can, they can break down the collagen and elastin fibers, and they can also cause some mutation in your DNA that can cause skin cancer. So sun in moderation. Yeah. And that's why we need vitamins in our diet, like vitamin C is an antioxidant, and beta carotene is an antioxidant, and it helps get those damaged skin you know, repaired and also to make the collagen, you need vitamin C. We asked, how do you take care of your Zoomer skin? I wash with Cetaphil, because the dermatologist said to wash with Cetaphil. I have this special stuff that I buy from the States, actually, and I've been using it for quite a while, and I really like it. What do I use to take care of my skin is uh, coconut oil. My skin care routine is um, uh, cleanliness, um, lots of um, very good uh, uh, moisturizers. I always, always, always wear a hat and sunscreen and sunglasses when I'm out in the sun. And they spoke exactly what you were saying. Protect against the sun and keep your skin clean. What other tips would you have to say? So I would say uh, cleanser should be very simple, not containing alcohol because it can dries out the skin and it can cause some damage. Uh, you have to keep the pH of skin always mild acidic. So most of soaps have harsh alkaline pH. So mm. you have to use a toner after your cleanser. And then the concept is before you put your sunscreen, you have to put some topical antioxidants like vitamin C serums, vitamin E, fluoritin, mm. something that can neutralize the UV light that can pass over the sunscreen. Well, here's one more viewer comment that we want to show you. In fact, I just had a little wee bout of, for the first time in my life, of eczema. So I, I have, in fact, asked my doctor about it. What did you ask them? I asked him, first of all, was I, in fact, having a little outbreak of eczema? And he said, yes. So once he confirmed that, he said, well, there's a cream out there. And I said, how healthy is it? Because I'm all about health. And, I, and he said, yeah, there's no harmful side effects. So he gave me a prescription. And uh, I, I feel quite good about, about now controlling that little wee bit of eczema that I've got on my skin. So what could have caused that? 
First of all, you know, the term eczema is, is thrown around quite loosely in medicine sometimes, or dermatitis, which can simply mean inflammation of the skin. So if we're not keeping up with our hydration, if we're not keeping up with good nutrition, stress factors, if we're not sleeping well, so mm. all of these factors can play a role. And so Marin, how can you treat this? Uh, there is a new concept to treat eczema with a blue light. It's close to UV light, mm -hmm. but it's a blue uh, wavelength in the light. It's named blue light therapy. Uh, the wavelength blue close to UV, it can suppress uh, some overactivated T cells mm -hmm. or immune cells. So they can cause eczema. So you can suppress them. Oh, really? Yeah. That's amazing. I like that idea. When we come back, we're talking skin laser technologies. Bye. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. The big advantage of this machine is this is the only technology that you can see inside when you're doing the treatment. Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to talk about how to make your skin glow with help from technology and good nutrition. So what are the areas that first show our age? Let's start with you, Dr. Peach. What do you think? Well, what are the places that we first, uh, first see when we're looking at someone? So, um, you know, when you, when you see those lines that form around the, the sides of our eyes, when you see those, uh, what we call those collagen the, uh, pads or fat pads in the cheeks start to drop, you start to see that sag, lines around the mouth, and of course in our hands. And so those are the areas, I think, along with the neck where you know, we start to show our age. Yeah. My mom yeah. always said my dimples would be my first wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're so cute. <laughs> yeah. It's true, though. Well, I'm uh, very curious about what you do at Arion, so we sent a camera to see how your skin lasers work. Uh, Olivia is here uh, to get some laser treatments on her face. I'm very interested in um, lifting and tightening and um, addressing the issue of wrinkles. So we have a couple of options here for you. Altherapy is a sound wave that puts the energy of heat at the deeper layers of your skin and your face structure. The big advantage of this machine is this is the only technology that you can see inside when you're doing the treatment. This is subdermis or the fat layer underneath your skin. So how that, that feel? Well, it's very tolerable. It's not uh, any uh, extreme discomfort. There is a sensation of um, vibration or yes. zapping. It's surprisingly uh, easy. This is Infini, the microneedling machine. Uh, it has a tip. So, and as you may see, so there are some fine needles here. This is mostly used for wrinkles and skin tightening. So how was your feeling with this treatment? It's, uh, it's very tolerable too. It's, uh, it's not, um, I wouldn't call it painful. The, the, it's a little bit like a snapping elastic. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna uh, put you under Helite. That is a low level laser. Reduces the downtime after e any kind of laser treatment. It's very relaxing and gives some high energy photons to your skin to regenerate your skin and rejuvenate. Zoomer clients that come to you, what is it that they want? What's their major concern or what are the few concerns that they have? Some wrinkles, some droopiness of, um, of the jaws and um, the neck. So uh, neck bands and double chin area is their concern. So you're telling me that in your clinic, your laser machines can lift all that up sort of thing? Yes, we have different kind of technologies in there. So actually with uh, all of them are heat-based or energy-based technologies. Uh, actually, we are putting some uh, injury deep in the skin and we harness the, the native or uh, ability of our body to repair that, to heal that. And what was in that little poker thing? <laughs> the <laughs> poker needles, right? Was. Yeah, oh, that one is uh, radio frequency energy. It's another source of energy or heat um, at the tip of some needles. So we can adjust the depth of the penetration of these needles. So we can do it in three different layers. So we name it 3D uh, skin volumizing because you can, you can put millions of uh, microthermal zones 
or damage that can lead to So it's not healing. injecting anything? No, it's not injecting mm -hmm. anything. Okay. We need to talk more about that, but, <laughs> you know. But what about food as the fountain of youth for your skin? Great tips. So let's go from the top protein. Yeah, we know that seniors aren't eating enough protein from new studies that say the baseline is 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. And then on top of that, if you're doing micro damage really? to yes. the skin, you need to have more protein to help with that healing. Um, and then of course the antioxidants to help get those free radicals, so vitamin C for collagen formation. You need your vitamin E, and vitamin E naturally um, with vitamin C works the best together. So getting seed oils, like um, you know, you wanna get your olive oil or your peanut oil, um, those are also great ways to get protein from eating those seed oils, like peanuts yeah. and flaxseed. Um, green vegetables, of course. We forget that women are getting older and our estrogen is declining, which affects our skin. Totally. So if you get plant sources of phytoestrogens, although they're weaker, they can help you with your skin over a long period of time as well. Mm. I was in Costco the other day and you can buy collagen tablets and CoQ10 tablets and you know, collagen is just a protein. So if you yeah. take it, it just breaks down into Next amino time, acids yes, anyway. Yes. So you that's, might as well eat your fish. Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's a careful conversation when it comes to supplements. Yes. We're going to come back and Dr. Peach talks about advancements in aesthetic medicine. Bye. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. So hyaluronic acid is essentially what our human connective tissue is comprised of. DM. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Canadians received over 126,000 filler injections and 142,000 Botox injections in 2005. Dr. Peach, those are old numbers. How do you think those numbers stand today? Oh, those numbers are blown out of the water now. I would say that uh, you could take those numbers and at least double them, if not triple them at this stage. And people are getting younger, do you think? It's not are, just Zoomers? Yeah, not oh, just oh, the clients? Yes. Oh yeah, the clients. There's a, there's a, the clients can vary from the early to mid 20s uh, right up to the 80s, So why 90s. would someone in their 20s need to get a Botox injection? Well again, you're using the word need. Uh, do they need want. to get it? Do they want to get it? Well, if you think specifically for Botox, what they're looking at there is line prevention. So if you think about what Botox does, it helps to prevent wrinkles, or at least that's what they're going to be using it for in their 20s. They, they want to get, uh, close the barn door before the horse gets out, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. And what about fillers? Why would someone young need to get fillers, or want to get fillers? Well, someone young in their 20s, let's say, we've been talking earlier about age-related changes in the skin, they wouldn't see much age-related change, but maybe they haven't been born with those nice big juicy lips or they may not have the high cheekbones that they envy. So those are areas where they can spot treat with uh, filler with uh, hyaluronic Sorry. acid. Well, I'm very curious about Botox. So we sent a camera to see what a Botox section looks like. Here we are and uh, Rachel has uh, graciously joined us this morning. Hey, how are you doing? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Good. So when we talk about Botox, we express it in terms of units. What we would typically do with the client is say, okay, how many units would we designate for certain areas? I'll get you to frown for me, give me a frown, 
And so you can see that Rachel forms these lines as a result of the contraction of the muscles around the eye. So we'll want to deliver a certain number of units here to the procerus muscle, your lateral corrugator muscles or medial corrugator muscles here, and she's also pulling a bit in her laterals. So we'll designate uh, probably a total of about 20 units in this area and then maybe three units for each of her lateral corrugators, about 26 units in that area. So now we're just gonna proceed with some injections in this area. So just a couple of units of Botox, just along into some of these lines, some of these muscles that are producing those lines. And then relax, so we wanna just treat these lines down here. You can totally relax now. There we go. So three little pinches on this side now. There you go. Great. You did great. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is Botox mostly used for the face then? So the three main zones where we'll use Botox cosmetically will be, as we indicated there, the, the areas, we call it the number 11, you know, those vertical lines in the, oh. in the glabella region, and then the lateral eye lines, often referred to as the crow's feet lines on the side of the Last eyes. Last lines. Yes. And then the good old oven rack on the forehead, those <laughs> forehead lines. So these are nicknames, of course, that people have given these lines. And these are just lines or wrinkles that form in the face from repetitive muscle contraction over time. Ah, and mm -hmm. how long does it last? I was gonna ask that. If you have yeah. more units, does that mean it lasts longer? Like they mentioned 20 units or whatever. Right, so there are industry standards in terms of how many units you use. And of course that depends on, um, you know, different muscle groups. Lasting time can be anywhere from as little as two and a half to three months with people who seem to metabolize Botox quickly to as much as uh, five or six months, although that's not typical. It's usually around three and a half to four months. Very interesting on Botox. Now I'm curious about fillers. So once again, we sent a camera to see what a dermal filler session looks like. So we're back in our treatment room again and we have Roberta joining us here today. So Roberta is going to have a consultation for hyaluronic acid fillers. You haven't had treatment before, have no, you? I haven't. No, so we want to make this as, as uh, comfy as possible for you. Or tell us what brought you here, like, like what's your interest in this? I've known people certainly who have done treatments, mm -hmm. but mostly in the Botox. I haven't actually known anybody who's done filler. I've who's just seen filler? people on the street that you can right. see them and you think, oh. So I can tell so. by your reaction that <laughs> your first inclination is, I shouldn't do this. Yeah. I think some people just go overboard and they go past what would look natural. I think that's perhaps. possible. And I think hopefully what we'll try and achieve today you know, for you is an experience with filler mm -hmm. that, to see that it doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. And so today, what we were taught, what we're going to talk about are a couple of areas that are classic areas for treatment. The first of which will be the cheek region. And the second area that we're going to treat will be the lip region. So hyaluronic acid is essentially what our human connective tissue is comprised of. And that's what these various cosmetic companies have done, is they've perfected the technology of basically producing hyaluronic acid compounds that can then be injected into the skin to basically provide some plumping of the skin. So, so small but noticeable, okay? So what you'll see is a little oh pickup. Oh look at that. See? Oh. So what we did was we brought, brought this up a little bit more even with this side. Yeah. And then again, high lateral on the cheek. You can see That's where we inject it. Well, okay, you. <laughs> you're welcome. Okay. That was fun. Dr. Peach, what are the concerns for new patients coming in for dermal fillers? I think uh, what I've experienced is their most common concern is being overfilled. As, as we saw with our client there, they were, uh, she was concerned about having something that was undesirable and what, uh, what she was concerned about is having too much. Obviously, they're concerned about bruising, they're concerned about uh, potential uh, pain, the experience uh, being painful. But natural is the key word. That seems to be, yeah, that they don't want to be overfilled. That seems to be the number one concern for clients. That makes sense. We'll be right back for our panel's final thoughts. Bye. Still ahead on Carpe Diem. Choose one or two things that you might be able to change in your eating habits now that will help you as you um, age. And then you'll have a healthy diet and a healthy skin. Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. 
It's now time to go around the table for our panel's final thoughts. Dr. Peach. Well, and in closing, I'd like to say that, um, you know, I want uh, potential clients not to be fearful of these treatments. When it comes to Botox and filler treatments, um, as you can see by the numbers, there have been thousands of, of clients over, over these years who have come. They've had successful treatments, tolerated them very well. Um, we shouldn't have uh, so much fear around these treatments. Come in, it's a very collaborative process. You don't have to fear that you're going to look like her. You know, that person that you just, you don't want those lips that have been overfilled or cheeks that have been overfilled. It doesn't have to be that way. Good advice. Yeah. And Ingrid, your final thoughts? Well, I think we always talk about the outside, but we also have to think about the inside. So as we get older, it's really important to make sure you're getting a varied diet, get your fruits and vegetables for those antioxidants and phytoestrogens, make sure you're getting enough protein, um, healthy oils from the various types. So vitamin E is in those oils, which is an antioxidant. And also just choose one or two things that you might be able to change in your eating habits now that will help you as you um, age. And then you'll have a healthy diet and a healthy skin. That's good tips. And uh, Miran, final thoughts? You know, I think uh, people have every right to be educated about the uh, the treatment that's going to be done on them. So you have to spend time with them in detailed consultations and also they have to consider combination therapy like injectables, laser, heat-based technologies and also food. What a fascinating panel. I've so enjoyed this program. So thank you Dr. Peach you. and Ingrid and Dr. Moran. Really fascinating. If you would like to see a conversation at this table, get in touch. And that's the show. Remember, as our CARP president, Moses Neimer, always says, the best way to keep going is to keep going. So, Carpe Diem and seize your day. Mm -hmm.